guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. And in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Soul to Squeeze by the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And it's one of my favorite Peppers songs to play on the guitar because there's so many cool riffs and licks to learn. Now, if you wanna master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you wanna improve on your guitar, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. Let's quickly talk tone settings. First off, I'm using a Strat here. Obviously, John Frusciante uses a Strat pretty much all the time. I'm using the neck pickup. And in terms of tone, I'm using a Boss Katana 50 to record everything. Now, I'm using a clean channel. There's a compression pedal and a chorus pedal on this. But other than that, it's a pretty standard clean channel. If you want this tone patch, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to grab it but you will need a Boss Katana in order to open that file. So let's start with the intro and we're going to start with our index finger here barring across the second fret of the fourth and third string. So just an A5 power chord essentially. We're going to go fifth, fourth and third string. So. Then we're going to go back to bass note and with our ring finger, fourth fret of the third string, pluck that and bend it up and release. So it's just a half bend. So really a small bend and, and release. And back to the second fret of the third string. And in total. And then our last lick, we're going to hit the open fifth string, second fret of the fourth and hammer on with our ring finger to the fourth fret. And then end with the second fret of the third string. So that first bar. For the second bar, we're starting the same way. So fifth, fourth, third string. Then for the next chunk, we're staying in this section, but we're hitting five quick notes. So bass note, fourth, bass note, third, bass note. fourth fret of the third string, pluck that and slide it quickly up to the sixth fret. And with your middle, fifth fret of the second string. And then you're going to go back to the sixth fret, hit that slide down to the fourth and end with the second fret of the third string. And that slide lick in total. And that bar in total. Now the third bar is identical to the first bar and then the fourth bar we start the same way. So we're gonna go fifth, fourth, third and then we have a four note run. So bass note, fourth, bass note, fourth. And then with your free middle finger, third fret of the sixth string, hit that. And I like to bend it down a tiny bit. And back to the second fret of the fourth string. And finally we end with that third fret of the sixth string again with another bend down. So those three notes and the final bar. So the first line of tab in total. For the second line of tabs, the first three bars are identical to the first line with the exception of one note. With this slide up lick that we have in the second bar, we're now actually going to hit the fifth fret of the first string when we do that slide up instead of the fifth fret of the second string. So that's the only difference there. And then for the final bar, we're hitting this A5 power chord and we're going to start strumming it. So. So that final upstroke, we're going to hit the third fret of the sixth string and just bend that like that. And that's it for the intro. In total, it sounds like this.
Next we get to the verse riff. Now obviously John Frusciante's style of playing is very freestyle, so he doesn't really stick to a structure, a lot of it is kind of improvised. But I'm going to teach you a very structured way of playing this verse that's just going to be easier to remember and easier to learn. But of course you can add your own embellishments to this as you please. So there's one line of tab for this verse riff. We're going to start with an F chord, we're going to start with the bass note here, and then we're going to do a slap. So that's just a down strum, but you're going to use your palm to hit the strings at the same time so that you just get that percussive mute as opposed to strumming notes. And then we're going to go up, up, and the F intonal. Then we're going to hit the third fret of the sixth string, slide up to the fifth, and then with your index finger hit the third fret of the fifth string, and that will take us to the C chord. So that's the C note right there. And then you can just build a C bar chord like this, or like this. I like to play with my ring finger, especially in the electric guitar, it's quite easy. So ring finger will bar across the fifth frets of the fourth, third, and second string. After you hit that bass note, we can then form that C shape and strum that with a down strum, like that. And then to end this bar, you'll hit the fifth fret of the fifth string and slide that up to the seventh. So the first bar in total. For the second bar, after the slide from fifth to seventh, I'm going to go back down to fifth fret. So this will take us to our D minor sort of shape. So you hold that note out for a little bit, and then we're going to go up to the eighth fret of the second string, hit that and pull off to six, and then hit the seventh fret of the third. So. And then with your thumb, reach over the top and hit the sixth fret of the sixth string. So this is going to take us to our B flat major seven chord. So that's the bass note there. Hit that, hold that out. We're going to hit it one more time. Then with your middle ring and pinky finger, put them into this position. So this is a, essentially a, a B major seven chord. So ring and pinky are on the seventh fret, middle finger here is on the sixth fret. Now you want to keep that fifth string muted. So that's B flat major seven. And you just want to strum that once like that. So the second bar in total. Then we're going to go to a D minor shape. You will strum it with that. And then we'll go up to an F bar chord like this with a down, down, down. And then mute. And we go down to a C bar chord. And that bar like that. So. that out and then we're going to play a chord shape like this so you just literally bar your index finger across the third fret for the fourth third second and first strings and then with your pinky finger or ring finger put it on the fifth fret of the first string for two more strings so that final bit so in total for this verse riff So that's it for the verse, next we move on to chorus 1, and there's two lines of tab here as well. We're going to start with an F chord up here, we're going to just strum it and hold it up for the full bar. Then we go to a C, so it's a C bar chord like this, I like to use my thumb and reach over the top to hit that bass note, of course you can play a full bar chord like that if you want, but John Frusciante tends to use his thumb as well. And then we're going to a D minor like this. Except we're not actually going to bar our index finger, you're going to leave that index finger up so the first string rings out. We've got that interesting note there. And then for our final chord we have a B flat major, like this, except again we're going to leave that first string open. It sounds pretty cool. For the second line of chords we have the same F 
and C. And then when we go to a D minor, we're going to go mute. Then A minor, mute, and then go up to the B flat. Like that. And that's it for the chorus number one. Now chorus number two is nearly identical, except when we strum this D minor in the second line of tab, it's mute, down, mute, down. Now, for the very final chorus, instead of strumming those chords and letting them ring, we're actually going to play a strumming pattern that goes down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up. The only exception to that, of course, is this D minor and the A minor to B flat in the second line of tab. So the final choruses will sound like this. Alright, next let's get to the solo, and this is quite easy to play, but it's a lot of fun as well. Sounds great. So we're going to start with the 12th fret of the 3rd string. You're going to hit that, bend and release, and then go down to the 10th fret, back to 12th, hit the 12th again and slide up to 14th, and then end on the 10th fret. So it'll sound like this. That's the first run. For the second run, we're going to hit the 12th fret, slide up to 14th, pluck it another two times, and then 13th fret of the second string, back to 14th, hit it and slide down to 12th, and then we go 10th fret, then 10th fret of the fourth string, but slide up to 12th, and then end on the 10th fret. So that full lick. For the second line of tab, we're going to start in a similar way as we did the first line of tab. So hit the 12th fret, bend up and release. 10th fret, 12th fret, then we go up to the 14th, and then we go down to 10th, but we hit that and bend release and hit the 10th fret again and then we end on the 12th fret of the 4th like that and the full lick and then we go to the 14th fret for our next lick we're going to pluck that three times 13th fret of the second hit that and bend up back down to 14th twice, then we go to 10th and 8th like this. You're going to pluck both strings, so it's a double stop, but you're going to bend up the 10th fret of the 3rd string, like that. Now you're going to bend it up to a pitch that matches the 8th fret. And you shift it down 2 frets, do the exact same thing, and then shift it 1 fret and do the exact same thing. So that whole lick. Now from here you can either dive into the chords of the bridge that I'll teach you later, or you can continue playing the solo. So it's sort of up to you, but the extended solo part has another two lines. We're going to go up to 17th and 15th with this same shape that we just ended on. We're going to hit that and bend up again with the third string. You're going to hold that and we're going to basically do the exact same thing again for the third bar. And then a small lick, 15th fret, slide down to 13th and 14th of the third string. For the fourth bar, we do that bend again on the, on the one beat this time. And then on the third bar, we do it again. And then we end by going 13th fret, slide down to 10th. Hit that 10th fret and slide down to 5th and then end by sliding that up to the 6th. So in total the main solo sounds like this, 
The extended part you don't have to play, but you can listen out for that in the playthrough. Next we get to the bridge and there's just two lines of the tab here as well and this is all bar chords and strumming. So we have a D minor here, D minor bar chord to a C for the first bar. The D minor is strummed with a down, up, mute. And then we go to a C with a down, down, So those two chords. And then we go to an A minor with a So those two bars. So we repeat those two bars through three times. For the third bar of the second line of tab, we're still doing that D minor to the C, but for the final bar, we go A minor to B flat with the down, up, mute, mute, down. So those last two bars. And that's everything you need to learn for Soul to Squeeze. So now I'll be playing through the song in its entirety. I'll have a vocal track on top for some context. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to this playthrough. Feel free to play this back as many times as you'd like to, to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
you guys have enjoyed this video. Be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve on your guitar, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. It'd mean the world if you could hit that like button, hit subscribe, click the little notification bell as well so that you don't miss out on my updates. Please leave your thoughts, comments, questions, or requests down below, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.